Hey guys, this is SJ, back at you with another video for today. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to protect yourself from the Equifax leak or hack that currently or just recently just happened uh, where 143 million Americans information was leaked, which kind of sucks, but we're going to get into that. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to, how to protect yourself from it. Um, I'm not saying that this is, this is like you're guaranteed not going to get your like identity theft or anything. I'm just saying this is like a kind of a way to show you guys some of the things that you can do to protect yourself from a uh, problem such as with that comes with that problem, like identity theft or whatnot. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. OK, so what we have to cover first is the whole Equifax thing. If you're not sure what's going on up until now while you're watching this video, Short, just basically 143 million people were information, personal information was leaked. And yeah, it sucks. Their information was possibly mine. Um, information such as names, social security numbers, date of birth, addresses, uh, and like, you know, numbers of driver's license and everything, stuff like that. Uh, possibly credit cards. Well, to be exact, 209,000 credit cards were exposed. And yeah, it, it really does suck. And right now, um, apparently Equifax is saying that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll protect you in the whole situation. Do not use Equifax, okay? They are going to pay for this. Uh, it, apparently, they said, uh, on, from what I'm reading, you know, on uh, CNN and stuff, and uh, what is it? Some website that's, uh, I believe it's 16WNEP.com, and it's basically a news channel. They uh, basically say that the company Equifax sold their stock before they uh, announced the breach. So, yeah, that's not okay. What the, do not use Equifax whatsoever. If you do, it'll be a lot harder to build a case against them. So, just try your best from using them. Um, what you're going to want to do if you if you're not sure if you've been affected by it, what you're going to do is you're going to go to trustedidpremier.com. Do not put a, do not uh, go exactly to what it says on the video. There's going to be a link in the description for you to go to that specific site, and it's going to see you're going to see which it, uh, it's going to see if you've been affected or not. Now, some of the things that you're going to probably encounter is you're going to have to put in your last name and the last six digits of your social so uh, basically that's it it's still it's the two digits in the middle of your social in this last four after that you just wait and then if then you'll see if you've been compromised or information has been compromised or it's been affected and you just after that you just wait and see it'll take literally a second for uh, it to find out or not so just give it a second but uh, let's go on to the next thing Okay, so uh, basically, if you were, what we're going to talk about now is if you've been compromised. Now, if you uh, put in the information and it gave you the option, if you were affected by it, which it'll say based on our information provided, we believe that your personal information may have been impacted by this incident. Uh, more than like, I just stay told, stay if you if you've been affected by it, which more than likely you are if you're watching this video. Stay till the end, watch the video, I'm gonna show you guys what you can do to protect yourself. Um, and do not, do not enroll in the trusted uh, ID premiere, don't. Like I said before, we're, we're gonna try to build a case against this whole thing. I like, you know, this, the, what uh, Equifax did and everything. You know, they, they, they gotta be held responsible. They gotta be held responsible, you can't, you can't do the things that you're doing and not be held responsible. Got to build a case against them. Um, now, if you weren't affected by it, which um, more than likely, I'm not sure. If you were watching this video, more than likely you, you, you weren't. More than likely you were affected by it if you're watching this video. But if you weren't affected by it, um, you don't have to watch this video. Uh, share it, you know, if somebody else has been affected. But you're still going to want to monitor your bank account information. 
and make sure that you're monitoring it really closely. You're closely monitoring it, making sure that things aren't changing and, you know, information. If anything changes, then, you know, you, get, you, you want to call your bank and fix things right away. You know, contact your local police department or, you know, set up a, a, a credit freeze or something like that. But we'll get farther than that to the video. Uh, something else that I want to speak about is that the whole thing with, uh, you know, how it goes with uh, the, uh, how the hack and everything, how it went. I honestly think most of the people, if you were, if you're from between the ages 16 and 18 years old, you more than likely have a 20, about 25% chance of being affected. This is the ballpark numbers. These aren't, you know, actual percentages. This is ballpark numbers. I think there's about 20, 25% chance that you were affected. Around 19 to 25, I'd say about 30 to 70% chance of you being affected by it. Uh, cause honestly, and cause honestly, if you, if let's, let's come on, let's just think about it. It's common sense. Uh, 30 years old and greater, around 80, 100% chance. More, at 30, if you're older than 30 years, 30 or older than you were affected by it more than likely. You live in America and you're 30 years old. You lived here for more than about 10 years. You, you, you've you been affected by it. Uh, I honestly think it's mostly just age because uh, people, you know, how scammers and everything, my years of dealing with scammers and everything, you know, uh, you know, scam calls and everything and ever, like stuff like that, that most of them, they don't usually go after people without credit. They usually contact people that has a credit history or per se, or who've been living here, living in America for a while. I don't know how they would be able to get that information, but you know, that's just how it is. You know, people usually go for stuff that's uh, that has a, that's built a credit history. And yeah, that's what I think. Again, it's just ballpark numbers. It's not an actual percentage, it's just, you know, just kind of just me ranting and everything. So don't worry about it. I doubt that, you know, my percentages are, are right anyways, but that's just what I think. Now, if you weren't affected by it, just it, it'll say based on our information, we believe that your personal information was not impacted by this incident. Do not uh, even then do not enroll into the trusted and ID premier thing it's it's garbage they're saying that they want you to use their service for a year and then they're going to charge you for it which is you you've caused this problem you let this thing happen and now you're telling me that I have to pay for something after a year this will take years to recover from years possibly decades stuff like that you know you you can't just say, oh, we'll we'll cover you for a year, and then after that, you you you're on your own. You got to pay for it. Like, no, you're going to you're going to provide every person who's been information has been compromised with protection up until the problem has been resolved. You're not going to do this. Um, if you want to hear more information, more into depth about the whole uh, incident and everything, I suggest you go over to uh, Philip DeFranco's cha channel. And go and watch his latest video about the about the whole Equifax hack and everything. It's really good. It's it he talks about a lot of things. Uh, it's it gets into depth about it. But yeah, just go and check that video. Go and check his uh, video out. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the next part. Okay, now we're going to start uh, attempting to fix things and start filing disputes and things about like that. Now, what you're going to want to do to begin with is you're going to want to request a an annual credit rec report uh, from annualcreditreport.com. The link will be in the description. Once you do that, you're going to choose a credit a credit agency for reporting. I've, me, I use Experian. Um, don't use uh, Equifax again. Don't use Equ Equifax. We don't need to use them. But that'll you'll choose that later into the uh, once you finish filling out uh, the information. Now, what you're going to do, you're just going to follow the, follow the steps. They're going to ask you a bunch of personal questions. Uh, just answer them correctly. Uh, try not to answer them incorrectly. If you do not know, uh, try to find out. But just, you know, try to answer the, all the uh, questions correctly. Uh, once you do that, they're going to ask you about 
uh, addresses. If you've lived at an address longer than two years, then you don't have to put a second one. But if you haven't put two, even if you have, I'd put uh, two, even if you have lived at an address for more than two years, I'd still put uh, a second address. If you've always lived at the same address for however long, if you've always lived there, then you don't need to put a second address. Um, once you've done, uh, it's going to uh, tr ask you a bunch of questions to verify your identity and everything. It's going to ask you where you've been, where you've lived and everything. And if it's wrong, just it'll tell you I've never lived here or this. Just tell them that it's not right. And yeah, once it's done, you just answer those questions correctly. Uh, it'll give you maybe five, six questions to uh, ask, answer and just answer them cor correctly. Once you've verified everything and fill out the information, uh, once you've done with that, you're going to let you into your account. Now, your account is going to be it's what's well, going to be your, your credit report. And your credit report is going to have everything in it. Now, everything from up until like, you know, you having information such as uh, stuff with like, you know, your addresses, uh, numbers, information, stuff like that. And now uh, once you've uh, when you see that, it'll give you the uh, it'll it'll show your credit report and everything. It'll show you stuff like your uh, helpful toolkit. You'll know when you see it. Um, uh, for yeah, it'll say personal information, uh, personal statements, potentially negative items, accounts and good standing, credit inquiries, uh, important messages, and then it'll say dispute card. Now, basically, what's going to happen is gonna you're going to see information. It's going to be a tab that says personal information. Personal information will give you all the names associated with uh, you know, with your credit and everything, basically. And if anything is incorrect, on like if you see a name there that's not your name then you're going to hit dispute and then once you hit that it's going to give you the option to choose a different uh, option to you know how to dispute this how to dispute this incorrect item so basically it'll give you three options it'll say i've n never known by this name uh belongs to another person with the same or similar name which is usually the case uh but if you are sure now i hope no one has to do this i, I truly do hope no one has to put this but the last option is going to be identity theft. Now, if you're not entirely sure that it is identity theft, do not put it. If it, if you are sure, if you are positive, like with every feeling in your body, like you know this is identity theft, then you go ahead and put this. If you see like some name that you've never seen before, uh, then just go ahead and, you know, more than likely it was possible possibly the same or if you see if you see your name and it's spelled incorrectly but it it has the same name but it's kind of spelled differently more than likely just put uh belongs to another person or the name similar of mine's or you've never been known by this name and then you're gonna or if you're sure it's identity theft go ahead and put identity theft but if you're not don't put identity theft because you know more than more than likely it's probably not so yeah. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to addresses. Now addresses, they're they're going to that's right below the uh, names associated with your credit. They're going to say, um, you know, they're going to show you all the addresses uh, associated with your credit and everything. It'll say if it's a home, it'll say single family or however. If it's a duplex, it'll say double family. I guess I'm not entirely sure. If you've lived in an apartment complex, it'll say apartment complex. If your residence type, it'll give you a geographical code your uh, identification number and the address of where you lived at. Now, if it, if one of these addresses are incorrect, you go ahead and hit dispute and choose what you want to put there. Now, it's up to you of what you want to put, okay? Now, for the telephone numbers, uh, you're going to put, it's going to give you an option of, it's going to give you, show you numbers that's associated with your account. If it is a, a number that is, that's not yours, you dispute that uh, you dispute that number, okay? If your birth, date of birth is correct, fine, keep that correctly. If it's incorrect, dispute that. Anything you're looking for things that are incorrect. That's what you're looking for. Anything that's that's not supposed to be there or anything that's just you don't know anything about. Now, any if you see any personal uh uh statements, credit statements or stuff like that, it'll show down below. If not, you don't have to worry about it. A uh, lower below, it'll say credit inquiries. 
Now, this is basically, you don't have to worry about this. This is basically just uh, if you've ever gone into like a, a, a car dealership and they wanted to do a, a credit report and to see what, you, what your credit looked like. Don't worry about it. It's just, they're just looking at to see what your credit looked like and everything. It's, a, it's normal. Don't worry about it. Now, once you're done with that, you're going to go, once you've disputed all this information and you've uh, seen all the information that, you've, that you're sure that it's correct, you're going to go over to the dispute cart. Now, the dispute cart is going to be where you're going to submit all this information and you're going to make sure that is, it is correct. Now, if it is not correct, then you go ahead and hit cancel dispute and then go back and then redo it and make sure it's right. And then that's it. Now, once you're done with that, it'll say submit uh, dispute or claim or whatever it's going to say. And at the very bottom where it says it's going to give you the option for the like, you know, account names, telephone numbers, anything that's correct or incorrect. Down right below that to the bottom left, it's going to say notify companies. You're going to notify each company. You're not going to call them. You're just going to hit that notify companies button and then it will give you the option to notify the companies for each company. And then they'll, it's going to notify the company of what's going on and everything. So, yeah, once that's done, you're good. It's going to have a green check mark. Now, usually the things that are the biggest problem that I've seen is the, um, the uh, what is it, the name. So if you have a name that's incorrect, even if someone's uh, like your name is kind of spelled incorrectly or spelled funny and you try to dispute that, it'll say um, what it was. It wasn't submitted and it needs your attention. And more than likely, it'll say our system is unable to process this item. Please cancel to continue or in contact us at the number that was provided. So we may be so we may better assist you with this item. Now, once you're done with that, once you're going to get these, you're going to get those uh, the identification numbers for each one that is incorrect, that, that's saying that it can't process it. And you're going to keep those identification numbers. Once you've done that, once you do that, you're going to hit continue. You're going to go ahead and continue and you're going to um, cancel it. And then you're going to hit continue. You're going to call that number. You're going to call that number and then you're going to give them that identification number and submit that, uh, that uh, dispute for that name that's incorrect on your account. Once you're done with that, then you'll be good to go. Now, once you're done and everything, you can go ahead and hit next and then they say get uh, your uh, report finished and then that'll be that and you'll be good to go. And then there you go, you're all set. Now, the, we're, we're basically done now. This is pretty much what you can do up until, you know, if something happens, uh, we, this is basically the, the end point where we can, where we, the most of we can do right now. Um, you're basically done. Um, now I do not suggest this, but only, and I mean only if you feel it's necessary, you can go ahead and you can freeze your credit by submitting a credit freeze. And it's, I, I don't, I don't recommend it, but if you are positive that, you know, you don't want anyone, you know, looking at or not looking, but you know, using your uh, credit information or anything like that, you can go ahead and freeze that. Uh, it'll be over to the right where it says the helpful toolkit and it'll be, uh, we'll say free center. And then once you're done with that, you know, you'll, you'll go in, you'll go through the prompts. It'll give you options of what you can do and everything. You just go ahead and go through that. And then, you know, that's what you can, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you are sure that, if you are sure that someone stole your identity, you can go ahead and click fraud center and you go through the prompts and do the same thing. It's in the same place, helpful toolkit. And you can do the same thing. Just follow the prompts. Now you're just, you're done now. Um, pretty much what you can do, I'll tell you right now, monitor your bank account and your credit information. And you know, basically just, just keep monitoring, monitor it really closely to make sure that nothing is changing or any information isn't, you know, any new information is being added on or, you know, you, you, you see something that just doesn't look right. You know, just make sure and monitor that information because you, you don't want anything to you know come up and something happens. So if you see something that changes, like, you know, funds were being used or if like, you know, something small is like, you know, five or 10 bucks or something was used in like a different country, uh, you, you know, or someplace else, you can, you, you go and contact your banking information. You contact your bank. Now, if you want to know how to monitor your information, 
You can either use email updates, which will give you uh, transaction reports or transaction alerts, and they'll tell you what uh, information, what, what you'll be, uh, what was being used. Uh, for me, um, uh, for me, I use Huntington, and you know I have their hat. Their I, I use uh, their app, and you know it tells everything that I use on the app is pretty much telling me what I use and everything. And if something that comes up, it'll be right there within the app, and I don't have to go through all that other stuff. So, if you have a bank like Chase, um, PNC stuff like that, you know you're, you're going to go ahead and use just use their using their app is more than likely the best case scenario. For you, if you've been affected by it, just just monitoring your you know your transactions and everything, and again, under no circumstances, do not use Equifax. Just don't. They're gonna pay for this. They're gonna you know it's going to be them that's going to have to deal with all this garbage, and that for their whole the whole, it's their screw up. They're gonna deal with it, okay. And so yeah, um, if you you know. If you want, if you have any more questions, you know, comment down below. If you want to know anything else, or if I, I'll try my best to help you guys out. And uh, you know, I answer uh, every single comment that I get, uh, or I attempt to try. Uh, any, you know, any comments or questions you have, just comment down below. Uh, with that being said, I love you guys. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Tell me where I can improve. Uh, share the video. Share it with your friends. You know, do it, do it all. Uh, with that being said, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.